Russian flags waved in Burkina Faso's capital following January's military coup in the West African nation. A statue unveiled in the Central African Republic last fall shows local soldiers backed by Russian fighters protecting civilians. Those are the more obvious symbols of Russia's resurgent presence on the continent. In 2019, at the first Russian-Africa summit of political and business leaders, Russian President Vladimir Putin made it clear Africa is a Russian priority. It was agreed at the summit to create a new mechanism for dialogue in the form of a Russia-Africa partnership. A second summit is planned for St. Petersburg in October. The first, in Sochi, generated diplomatic agreements and billions of dollars worth of deals for arms, agriculture, energy and more, said organizer Ross Congress Foundation. Moscow's overtures in recent years offer cooperation without what Putin has called the political or other considerations imposed by Western countries. Russia provides, um, as did the Soviet Union before, an alternative vision for African nations. Um, and uh, if there is one common feature between what the Russians are doing now and what the Soviets used to do, uh, it's this common anti-Western critique. The spread of militant Islamist extremism and other violence in Africa has created more openings for Russia's military. In Mali, so has the planned drawdown of troops by France, Mali's former colonial ruler and partner in the fight against jihadists for nearly a decade. Private military contractors also are helping advance Moscow's agendas in Africa, Western observers say. These include fighters in the shadowy Wagner Group, allegedly controlled by Putin associate Yevgeny Prigozhin. Putin has denied any connection with the group. It is not the state. It is private business with private interests tied to extracting energy resources, including various resources like gold or precious stones. But experts say whatever the goal, the result is that where the Wagner Group shows up, trouble follows. Every place we've seen uh, Wagner deployed around the world and in Africa, be it in Libya, Sudan, Mozambique, Central African Republic, it has been a destabilizing force. Joseph Siegel, with the Africa Center for Strategic Studies, says mercenaries are part of Moscow's toolkit to prop up weak African leaders in exchange for economic or other advantages. They aid elites, not average citizens. What Russia has been doing um, has been uh, deploying mercenaries, um, disinformation, election interference, arms for resources, deals, opaque contracts. The United Nations is investigating reports of grave human rights abuses in the Central African Republic, allegedly committed by private military personnel. In Mali, the leaders of a 2020 military coup have brought in Russian military trainers and what U.S. and French authorities say are Wagner mercenaries. Some in Mali welcomed them by waving Russian flags, reflecting not only the country's historic ties with the former USSR, but also public impatience over continued insecurity. In 2013, the Malian population were enthusiastic when the French arrived in the countries. And you can see today that they are rejecting their presence. To be honest, I would not be very surprised if in two years or so, uh, the same could happen uh, with the Russian presence, in fact. Niagale Bagayoko, who chairs the African Security Sector Network, says African countries are showing a willingness to look beyond a single foreign partner. Uh, there is the realization of the fact that being only engaged with a single actors uh, or uh, with a, a single group of countries uh, is uh, restricting the possibilities uh, for uh, diplomacy, uh, but also for um, military uh, apparatus. Russia isn't the only foreign government trying to broaden influence in Africa, home to vast resources and a surging young population. The White House plans a second U.S.-Africa summit later this year, and the European Union has announced a new $170 million investment in infrastructure to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. China has been Africa's biggest economic partner for at least a decade. Carol Gunsberg, VOA News, Washington.